In this video, I want to do another example of conservation of mechanical energy, and this time play with the coordinate systems a little bit. Here's my problem. I have a mass and it hangs on the end of a string of length L at an angle 45 degrees from the horizontal at rest. You let it swing, and it, when it reaches the lowest part of its swing, what is the velocity? We want to choose the object. The object is going to be the mass. The next thing we need to do is identify the forces. Of course, there's gravity on this acting on this object. There's also a tension force, and the tension force acts on the object along the string in a direction away from the object. So gravity is a conservative force, and tension is not a conservative force. Does that mean mechanical energy is not conserved? No, because the tension is always acting perpendicular to the velocity. At this point, the velocity is tangent to the arc, while the tension is perpendicular to the arc. When it reaches the bottom, the tangent is pointing that direction, while the velocity is that direction. So at each point in time, the tension is perpendicular to the velocity, so it never does any work on the system. So there's no net work done by non-conservative forces. That means the mechanical energy is constant and conserved. We next need a coordinate system. I decided to put my origin of the coordinate system at the pivot point where the string is attached. And this time I decided to have positive x down. So what does that mean? Here's the functional form of my force. I know it has a magnitude of the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and it always points towards the center of the Earth, which, given this coordinate system, is along the positive x direction. I'm going to extract from that just the components, so I have f is equal to positive mg. Now I'm going to find the negative antiderivative of that function for my potential energy. So that's negative mass times g times x plus some additive constant. So I need to define where my zero of potential energy is. I've decided to declare my zero of potential energy to be at x is equal to zero. If I plug that into this expression, then mgx turns to zero, which means c is equal to zero. So my potential energy function is negative mass times g times the x coordinate. Now I need to find my initial and final energies. Initially, it's at rest, so there's no kinetic energy. And it has some x coordinate, which I have called h. At the final time, which is the point where it reaches the lowest part of the swing, it has a potential energy equal to negative mg times its location, which is now a distance l along the x-axis. It does have some kinetic energy at this point, so it has one half mv squared worth of that. I've already established that I have conservation of mechanical energy, so the total initial energy is equal to the total final energy. I went ahead and calculated what h was in terms of l. I know that it was at a 45 degree angle, so if I do a right triangle, I know that the distance h is equal to l cosine or sine theta, which is l over the square root of 2. Substituting that in for h, I get this expression. Now we can do some algebra to solve for the velocity. It looks like I can cancel out the mass, and I brought this negative gl over to the other side to make it positive, and then multiplied everything by 2. I factored out the 2g times the length, and now my velocity is the square root of 2, the acceleration due to gravity, the length, times this factor 1 minus 1 over the square root of 2. And of course we could be done, but I promised we'd play with the coordinate systems a little bit. So let's do a new one and see what happens. In this coordinate system, I established the zero at the lowest point of the swing. I chose the positive to be up, and I called my coordinate y this time. So now I need to define my gravitational force. It always has a magnitude of mass times g, and it always points towards the center of the Earth. So with this coordinate system, the force is a negative mg j hat. Extracting just the components, I have the force is equal to a negative mass times g. That gives me a potential energy function equal to the negative antiderivative of that force function, which is a positive mgy plus c. So I also need to establish where my zero of potential energy is. 
And just to do something different, I established my zero of potential energy to be here, at x is equal to L. If my zero of my coordinate system is at the lowest part of the swing, and I establish my zero of potential energy at the pivot point, that is, by definition, a distance L away. So U evaluated at the Y coordinate L is equal to zero. So I need to plug that into my expression here, which says that MG evaluated at L plus C is equal to zero. That's the zero of potential energy. That allows me to solve for the constant, which is negative MG times L. So I put that back into my expression, and my potential energy is now MGY minus MGL. Let's factor out an MG. And this is my final potential energy as a function of y. Now we're ready to set up our initial and final energies. Initially, it's at rest, so it has no kinetic energy. It has some potential energy because it's this distance above the zero. So what is that distance? Before, I identified h as the distance it was from the pivot point. Well, if the pivot point is a di distance l away, that means this distance here is an amount L minus H. So my initial potential energy is mg times the y coordinate, which is L minus H, minus L. Now to the final energy, well it has some kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and it also has some potential energy. When it's at the very bottom, the y coordinate is zero, so I substitute zero in for that. Now I set them equal, and here the L's cancel, so I'm left with a negative H, so it's negative mg times H, one half mv squared, the zero goes away and I have a negative mg times L. Again, if I notice that H is L over the square root of two, I substitute that in and I have this expression, which is exactly the expression I had before, right here. I'm not saying that second choice of coordinate system and zero of potential energy was better. In fact, that's an important point. You're always free to choose the coordinate system, both the location of the zero and the direction of the positive axis. You're also allowed to make a separate choice of the zero of potential energy. And some choices will make your problem simpler than others, and that just takes practice to be able to to guess correctly. However, your physics should not depend on those choices, and you should get the same result each time.